Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of The Random Show. I am Kevin Rose. I am Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss is, of course, a best-selling New York Times author, inventor of the term the China virus. And no, I'm just kidding. I, I, true fact. True fact. Not true fact. Not true fact. Uh, and we're, we're thrilled, dude. This is awesome. This is like, what a great break from the chaos than to hang out. It is. Yeah, it is. And it, I'll give you credit for the idea of doing something live, which I, I think at least for me is very stress reducing and calming amidst all this uncertainty to have an actual time where you see your friends faces and I've not been drinking at all. So it's actually exciting to have a little bit of boozy booze. Cheers, Kevin. Cheers. And everybody out there. Yes. Cheers Thanks for joining. Watching. And well, let's, let's uh, perhaps start with what we're, what we're drinking here. Yeah. What are you having? So um, our mutual friend, um, Will Harlan, I'm having the mascot 2012, which is a fantastic uh, Cabernet. Um, out of Napa Valley. Um, highly recommend checking out their site. Um, yeah, it's called The Mascot, and it's uh, one of my favorite cabs for sure. So this is something I just pulled out, and I have no idea where this came from. <laughs> I didn't buy it. So it is whatever that is. I can't pronounce French particularly well. T-Y-D-Y, Sauvignon did, Blanc. Is this like someone sent this to you? If you didn't buy I it. I think it was... Pro- not, I mean, almost all of my wine has been given to me, uh, and this just got yanked out. So I decided to go white, took a little magnesium three and eight and l lysine and a few other things to mitigate the hangover, since I expect I'll probably finish this during this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see, we'll see how that works. I think it could be futile so yeah. to, be, to, be, to be continued, but what, what other context should we lay out I think before us. Well, I think that, you know, I, I know that when we, you know, you and I will, I put together a document before the, the show, a little shared Google doc and, you know, we have to figure out what we're going to be talking about in the show. And one of the things that I, I know we both wanted to address was just to say, um, you know, on a, on a downbeat before we try and make this a little bit more of a upbeat show is just to say our thoughts are with everyone out there. Um, it's a, an extremely difficult time. Um, and, you know, we all have stories of, of chaos and craziness and the ups and downs and emotional roller coaster that's going on right now in, in the world. And we know that there's people that are watching this that have been laid off. There's people that are watching this that are, that might even be sick or have friends or family that are sick. And, uh, you know, I, I know I'll let you speak for yourself, Tim, but I know that, I mean, my thoughts are with all of you. Um, it's a, it's a really, really difficult time. Yeah, I, I want to echo all of that. I have family members who've been laid off. I have seen that amongst a lot of my friends, friends I grew up with, and uh, our hearts go out to everyone. And thanks for joining. And this is really, aside from the other things that we might be doing, just an, an attempt to offer a salve, even if just for an hour or two, yeah. uh, to have a feeling of being connected with other folks. Brian Koppelman, who I recently is a friend of mine, co-creator of Billions, recently had on a podcast recording, hasn't been published yet, but he does something called the Royale every morning, which is his first cup of coffee, he takes a picture and he has other people post their pictures. And it's become this real vibrant community of people who look forward to this every day. So I figured at your recommendation, Kevin, that this would be a fun experiment just to allow everybody to hopefully take you know, 60 minutes without looking at your Twitter feed or the bad news. There's going to be plenty of bad news. It's still going to be there later. You don't have to look at it now. And uh, it's been heavy. It's been really heavy. I don't know about you, Kevin, but I was texting you before we started recording. I have lost, and it's not like I had that much weight to lose to begin with, you. but I've lost, well, I've lost... 15, probably 15 pounds in the last four weeks. I've been in quarantine for five to six weeks, but it's, it's been you. from, it's been from, <laughs> I've, been, I've been, I've been eating pizza and chocolate, dude, like every night. I'm not kidding. How well, are you maybe, losing weight? Well, maybe it's, 
that you know <laughs> the energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It just changes form. So by me losing <laughs> weight, I'm just putting it on your muffin mm. top. That that could be. You're welcome. You'll last yeah. longer. When we get to on the like the road or Mad Max, you'll live for a longer time. But the point being, like I've been I've been even when I'm not consciously aware of it, quite under duress and have been having anxiety dreams and nightmares for the first time in God knows how long. I've never really had nightmares consistently and have had uh I've had trouble remembering to eat. I mean, that sounds crazy. And I know some people might want to have that, but it's been a strange period. It's been a really strange period for me and so, for a lot of people. I got to say, Tim, that like you were the first person that was warning me uh, about this stuff months ago. Like when it first, yeah. when it first kind of broke out and it, and it just like, you know, it's starting to gain a little traction in China. Like you were like, <laughs> prepping big time dude and i, I was, remember yeah. i was giving you shit i was like ah, i don't know man summer will come around it'll get hotter this will kind of like die down and you were hardcore prepping and uh you know props to you for calling it early and and what are you doing where are you are you in a bunker somewhere like what what's going on in <laughs> tim's life you literally not, like what is the screen behind you like what the, the hell's going the, the, on the, the decor is a bit intense uh, i'm using my scorsese cinematography to make this look really dramatic i'm in a guest bedroom because i wanted to be hard connected the internet is being hammered by everyone being home so Netflix, i have a tiger king yeah everyone yeah exactly Pornhub premium so everyone's <laughs> killing bandwidth and I have an Ethernet cable connected, and it's just easiest to set up in the guest. Yeah, uh, I, I know you have an Ethernet connected cable because you called my ass up so I could walk you through setting your motherfucking Ethernet up. I you, know. <laughs> thank you, te thank you, tech support. Yeah, I got to send you a uh, PayPal invoice for that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm in Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm I'm quite happy to be here right now. Uh, my parents are in New York. That worries me. Of course, they're older. They're not in the best of health. But there's only so much How's, one can do. So yeah. I, I, I want to poke a little bit into it. And if I go too far, you let me know. But like, you know, your, yeah. your dad has been one to want to venture out and go out yeah. and, stay and think this is not a big deal. You know, you and I have talked about this privately. Have yeah. you convinced him otherwise? Like, have you convinced him to stay home and avoid? Yeah, he 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 turned the corner uh, and i think this is this has been a common experience for a lot of folks our age or even younger to understandably have parents who have been through many so-called crises who have been resistant to completely stop all of what they're doing, which I think is a very understandable position. And then you add in the political polarity and I don't, uh, this is kind of the, <laughs> we I mean, probably want to go to, dude, go, why not? go to great. No, we'll go to greener pastures in a minute. But the, the point is that he, to his credit, when I was able to separate the politics from the science and talk about the science, he, he listened to it and he took it seriously. So I'm, I'm, perhaps more fortunate than some in that both my parents are taking this very seriously, which is great. Yeah. And yeah. I've got a, yeah. I, it's tough because, um, my mom's going to be 80 this year and she's, um, she's living still by herself, but assisted in that she has to have yeah. someone come by and like, um, help her with, with meal preparation and, and things like that. Um, you know, she's, uh, she needs care. Like she can't, live on her own anymore, just totally solo and independently, but she's doing well. Um, and it's tough because like, you know, I was talking to my sister today and this new stat coming out saying that, you know, 20 to 25% of people are asymptomatic and they have no symptoms at all. And I'm like, my mom's like, Hey, you know, like, when are you going to see me? And I, of course I have a video with her and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I'm like, okay, well mom tomorrow, if the weather is okay, meaning it's not raining in Portland, I'll come over with a mask on and sit six feet away from you and we can have a chat and you know, and that will be the way that I interact with my mom. And it's, it's like, it's in a way it's heartbreaking because I have two young kids and they don't get to see grandma and they haven't for weeks now. And, uh, you know, so it's like, it, 
it's stressful for everybody out there, man. It's like, it doesn't matter who yeah. you are, you know, it's like, everybody's got something that's, that's weighing on them. Yeah. And then you're, so, you're locked in the close quarters with your girlfriend and I'm locked in close yeah. quarters with my wife. And not to say that's, yeah. that's a, a bad thing, but it's, you know, it's unusual to have that much like straight up one-on-one -on -one time. Right. How's, how's that yeah. going? It's going well. I think <laughs> it's, I think it's like, uh, for those people who haven't been to burning man, what they say about couples going to burning man is it's double or nothing right? You're, because you're going to be with each other 24 seven, you're going to have all of these additional stresses. And I think we're seeing that now. And we've developed routine part of the benefit, if you want to call it that of having been in quarantine for almost six weeks now. And I, I have some pre existing lung issues. So I, I've been extra careful, but is that we've we've adopted certain routines and had these emergent habits and rituals that have become really nice, actually, some of them, but certainly there's more pressure in the container. So if whatever cracks you may have, and everybody has their cracks <laughs> are going to be a lot more obvious. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine who was saying it's, it's like a magnifying glass that shows you your psychological Achilles heel. So, I'm trying to view that as an opportunity, right? As a real opportunity where if you're at home, if you're in quarantine, putting aside financial considerations, which I know are very real for a lot of people, but many people who are watching this are going to be safe at home. So you're basically in a sort of a, a padded room, like a Chuck E. Cheese ball pit where you get to see these things that are weaknesses slash unresolved issues slash opportunities that you can start to work on and then will translate to other areas later yeah. right, in your life. And one of the, one of the bullets that we had to discuss, which we could certainly talk about, I'll keep drinking, yeah. which will, which will give me some liquid personality and higher confidence, which is dangerous. But one of the bullets that you'd shot over, any good books worth reading now? So I'd be, cu I'd be curious to start there because I have some thoughts. Actually, I'll, I'll just throw one out there, yeah. which, which is called Already Free. And it's by, I believe, Bruce Tift, T-I-F-T. And I, I highlight... So I've, I've highlighted so much of this book. It's hard to believe it's uh, closely related to, and I might've mentioned this book to you already, Kevin. I, th I think the surrender experiment or the Michael Singer courses that you've spoken about before. I love Michael Singer stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, but th this book already free has been uh, quite impactful for me and puts, puts a lot, in perspective. So that's one book that I've been thinking more about also uh, as I sit at home and cannot escape myself. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. there are only so many things you can do to distract and busy yourself within the square footage of your house. Uh, but what other, what other books it doesn't have to be related to the psychological stuff. What other books do you think are, perhaps helpful to read or what yeah. end, what are you and, and what are you reading? Well, I think there's, there's two that come to mind. Um, one is, is definitely that a lot of people have had that are fortunate enough. Not everyone is, is in this position, but that are fortunate enough to transition to online work, um, are, you know, having to deal with a whole new set of tools and a whole new way of working. So, uh, Jason Freed, who I've had on my podcast, have you had him on your podcast? Have you had Freed on yet? I have. Yeah. About yeah. a year and a half, two years ago. Very smart guy. I mean, just brilliant. He, he was way ahead of his time in writing the book um, remote. And he has a couple other books about remote and distributed culture that are fantastic. Um, definitely check out the book remote from him. If you have a small business and you're looking to transition to more remote or you yourself are going through this, it's a great one to recommend to your boss or to read yourself. Um, that one is, is definitely at the top of my list for people. I, we have 300, you know, entrepreneurs at, um, our founders at, uh, true ventures. And so that's definitely one that I'm recommending to a lot of them. Um, Boglehead's, uh, guide to investing, I think is another great one. 
And I know it's, it's, um, it's tough to talk about investing in, in times like this, but if you look back historically, um, you know, the best time to place bets, and that can be literally, you know, tens of dollars because there's such beautiful things now that exist such as fractional share ownership, like um, apps like Square Cash and Robinhood and others allow you to buy just a fraction of a share. Um, it, it, if you can't afford, afford say, a, you know, a, a $300 share of, you know, pick any major big company out there. Um, so Bogle, John Bogle, who's since passed away, is the founder of Vanguard. And he was a big fan of index investing. Um, and so is actually Warren Buffett. And so index investing is, is not picking individual stocks, but buying um, a, a market like, say, like the S&P 500 or, or uh, you know, an index of the bond market. And it, it really has been proven as to be is one of the best, most reliable ways to invest and outperforms, you know, hedge funds long term. It's like in John, John Bogle, the, the, you know, the person that uh, the, the creator of Vanguard was really the pioneer in coming up with this concept and creating the um, mutual fund, index fund, mutual funds back way back in the day. Anyway, that guy, Bogleheads, his name's last name is Bogle and his fans are called Bogleheads. So it's a B-O-G-L-E heads guide to investing, I think is a fantastic book and will introduce you to the concept of index investing, which um, is is really tried and true and, and, and the best way to go. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely something that uh, was, was, Someone I read probably a decade ago and then continue to reread every few years. Yeah, Joel Joel Greenblatt's books are also quite good. I think it's like the little blue book of yeah. investing, little green book, Joel Greenblatt. And I I think he once said to me, I don't think I'm talking out of school by saying this, but that you should effectively read his books in the opposite order they were published. So read from the most recent to the oldest. The oldest talks a lot about event-based investing, which is very, very interesting. Exactly. Somebody, I Siegel, how to be a stock market genius. Terrible title on some level, kind of like the four hour work week. Excellent, excellent, excellent book. Uh, and I second Bogle as a recommendation. Uh, you know what I've been paying a lot of attention to, Kevin, because it's like in bear markets, bull markets, domestic, international, what has outperformed almost every other asset class? Can don't, you guess? Don't say real estate. I hope you're porn saying- ET, Porn ETFs. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all you. You're big into that in the marijuana stocks. <laughs> yeah, I'm 50-50 porn, yeah, and, porn, that's porn Tim's, and marijuana. Tim's portfolio right there. Yeah. You should my, post that my, online. Uh, rule number one of investing, never underestimate human vice. Uh, that's not true. That's a lie. So what, what were you going to say? What was it? No, that was it. It was just a layup for a, <laughs> okay. for a setup, for a setup, for a joke, <laughs> setup for a joke. I, I will, I will say though, on the investing front that no matter what, everyone who is listening to this or watching this right now, I think should think of themselves as investors because you have resources you have, say, time, you have energy, you have hours, you have capital, and you choose how to allocate those resources. If you have to choose, and you do, and not choosing is also a decision, you are an investor, right? And you're looking for a, a, a result or a return on investment from allocating those different resources. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 can, you can really think like an investor, even if you don't have much disposable income at the moment or no income, you can still think of yourself as an investor and hone the thinking, the types of thinking and the process of good investors. And that's where these books I think are very interesting. I read uh, a lot of these books, the I, books by Bogle, books by Joel Greenblatt. I read his books when I had absolutely Same. fuck all. Yeah. I had nothing, nothing. And it's been like a slow simmer with that in the background for a long time. And now, very fortunately, you and I are in positions where we can utilize it, but we prepared in a sense beforehand, right? I mean, I was I was reading books on investing when I, I, I had not a penny to my name. And uh, this is, uh, I think, a, a good time 
to, even if you don't have money to invest, to read about investing and to paper trade, right? And there are probably apps that allow you to do this very easily, but to effectively say, all right, let's pretend that I have $1,000 right now or $10,000, where would I put that money? And you make a record of where you've committed hypothetically to put that money. And then you Bitcoin. look at the performance over time and you can look at why you were, or if you were right, if you were wrong, to what degree you were right or wrong and why you think you were right or wrong. Uh, Bitcoin, you're more of a crypto expert than I am. I'm not, uh, I, I, I know very little of crypto, but uh, I, I do think it's it's important to emphasize that the way you end up being a good investor, from my perspective, is by thinking a lot about the types of decision making that makes a good investor before you actually start allocating money to things. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, and I, I really like what you said around like thinking about how to invest your your own time during times like this as well. I have two examples of that. One. I know someone that is working part-time still has a little bit of income, but doesn't have the other portion of their income and is now going to, um, take online classes for, um, as far as they can go to become a nurse. And he <laughs> is, um, said, this is the perfect time to do that. And, um, I know someone else that's laid off and that was like, Hey, where's the best coding school that I can learn how to code? And it was like, now's the time. Like, I'm going to be collecting unemployment for the next few months. There's not going to be any crazy great job opportunities, but I want to learn how to code. And I can, I know that that can be done in six months time. Right. So, you know, it's like, that's uh, now's a great time to invest in, in yourself in some sense. Do you, do you want to talk about, I know you put this in your newsletter recently, maybe today, Treehouse, other options? Where should people go? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a ton of options out there. I, I hesitate. Lambda, La, Lambda School. There's. I'm reading comments. People are like, Tim Ferriss is multitasking. Yeah, I'm reading your goddamn I, comments. No, it's it's great. Actually, if people <laughs> um, want to post them in the comments, yeah, Free Code Camp, there's a ton. Uh, I, I hesitate to recommend Treehouse because I'm an investor there. It, it is a high quality product, but there's a lot of Evan talking his book. He's talking his book. Don't listen you know, to that like, guy. You know what I mean? It's like we, we get in trouble anytime <laughs> we say anything like that. So, but the, the code code Academy is another great one. There's a lot of them. I, here's what I would say. This is the real talk. Go out yeah. there, sign up for three of them and yeah. figure out which ones you like. Like take a couple classes on each one and be like, mm, this instructor is talking to me more. They're speaking to me more than another one. I'm going to go with this one. And maybe it's a paid one and maybe it's a free one. Who knows? But but try yeah. a few. YouTube is also honestly just incredible. I, I've, uh, I know a number of people who've gotten really up to speed on everything from virology to options trading on YouTube. And yeah. these are these are really smart people and they've found some of the best options for free on YouTube. Turns it's, out that it's, YouTube, it's a popular thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've heard of it. I've heard of yeah, it. I've heard of that YouTube. A little late to the, late to the party, but I love the comments like, yes, Tim, thank you. YouTube. Yes. Learn, love YouTube. Everybody loves YouTube. Tim, good, good you, wreck. Yep. Yep. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I am the bleeding edge, the bleeding edge of new technology. Oh, uh, good Lord. What it. else, uh, what, what else would you find helpful to read right now, Kevin? Uh, honestly, man, or what, 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 what are you reading? What well, are you I'm not actually reading. reading? I'm not reading. I'm what I'm doing right now is, uh, listening to podcasts about the coronavirus. Like I think that Peter Atia has converted his podcast, the drive into a fantastic resource for the latest research on coronavirus, what we should be doing, what happens if you come down with it. What, what, you know, yeah. I mean, we all have our little, actually this, uh, I don't know if you're comfortable sharing like your medical, like what would you do if you, do you think we talk about that or no? Do people want to hear that? What, like what I, would I do if what, if you I, came down with it, like what would you, uh, I, it's I hard because it's medical da advice, right? Dangerous, dangerous territory. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think, I think just by, <laughs> I think if we were to give both and we're not, giving investment advice. We're not registered investment advisors, but I think if we wanted to make this the perfect Venn diagram of, of unnecessary liability that we could talk about medical, but yeah. I think it'd be, I think it'd be irresponsible. I will say this, that I am optimistic. I'm bullish about therapeutics for coronavirus. 
in other words, treatments that will not necessarily cure, uh, so to speak, but mitigate the severity of COVID-19, I'm less optimistic about vaccine yeah. development. And, well, at least uh, in the short term, obviously, right? There's there's nothing that can well, happen. Short, for, short term meaning 12 to 18, 18 months. months. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 12 months would be a miracle. Yeah, be a world record. Yeah. And uh, it could be. I mean, it, who knows, right? I mean, the US, the US, if we're talking about the US, and this is really a global issue, but the US is going to be the largest hotspot in the world. Oh, and dude, it already is. Yeah. No, I, I'm just saying, like, it's going to be, we were looking at maps before we started recording. Yeah. And you were like, this is going to look like the Verizon. It does. It looks like the Verizon map. availability chart. Like our, the U S yeah. map does. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're going to be all red. So, uh, I, I'm why do you think that is? Well, I have my, I, I, I have my I, suspicions, but I'm curious why you think that is. And we don't have to, let's well, not talk about Trump. Don't blame the, the, the why no, 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 no. I don't think it has anything to do. With, I mean, it has, I think it has actually very little to do with Trump. The it's, it's, uh, we're not going to be all red. I take it back. We're going to be red based on how the maps are represented because they make the red circles large based on the number of cases in a given location. Therefore, when you zoom out and you look at a map of the United States, even New York kind of swallows the right. entire sure. Northeast. So there's, there's, uh, there's a challenge kind of Edward Tufte style in visual representation for that map. But we will be based on how we're currently representing that data entirely red based on a distribution across a say in the short term, Miami, New Orleans, et cetera. But if you look at the, if you look at the kinetics of the disease in say Washington compared to New York is very, very different based on in what many sense? factors. Well, if you look at the, if you look at the R not right, if you look at the replication of the virus, it's very different based on population density and the dynamics. Yeah, of course. I mean, it right, has right. To be, no, right? And, and that's why I wouldn't expect, for instance, like I, I'm not. I wouldn't expect South Dakota to be a huge hotspot. Right, right. I get that. Idaho's not going to be right. massive, right? Yeah. Right. So, so there will be in some, there, in some respects, fire breaks between places that could be hotspots, and you know, my, my expectation a few weeks ago was that because the U S is loath to impose any strict type of geographic lockdown that from New York, the places that would explode would be where all the second homes are from people who are escaping New York. In other words, Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, Connecticut, upstate New York, Long Island, and Florida. Right. And then you have event based jumps in cases such as spring break based in Florida, plus then in the returning students, say to Texas, 44 cases, I believe yesterday. And then you have Mardi Gras, New Orleans. So I'm right. extremely happy that South by didn't happen in yeah. Austin as yeah, an thanks example. Thanks for helping push that. That was huge. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, it's I shouldn't like a lot of shit for it at the time, but I, f I felt pretty confident in the data. But, but we're talking a lot about COVID probably. I don't know if we want to keep doing it, but the, the, the point I was going to make is therapeutics, optimistic vaccine, pessimistic, but uh, I really feel like, uh, well, I should say like, I'm more optimistic now than I was four weeks ago about how the U S can recover reasonably quickly. Uh, and and by, recover is not the right word. What I mean is implement a phased approach to reintroducing people to jobs and so, economic activity. So, so here's my three-step plan, if you will. Oh, Kevin's three-step plan. Well, number one, we need to be testing anyone and everyone. My So I have a nanny that helps with our two kids. She got extremely sick had chest issues where she couldn't breathe, fever, uh, the whole gamut, like everything that you would check as a box of like, okay, you have it, right? She's been home now for a week and a half. She went to the emergency room two days ago in Portland, Oregon, and they would not test her because she didn't walk in with a fever. She didn't have an active fever. Yeah. Yeah. We have to be 
insanely aggressive about testing. That's one. Number two, people that have recovered, we need antibody tests and they need to say, I've been recovered and can re return to work. We need to know who those people are and give them the green light to go back and help start things up again, right? Like, I think that's ex insanely important. And we also, like, I, one of the things that um, we need to be good at is like really, and this is gonna be more important six, eight months from now, is really when we do see a flare up, like do that contact tracing and really telling yeah. people to lock down because it's just not just going to go away. Like it's going to keep, we're going to have flare up after flare up after flare up. We have to make sure that we're really guess aggressive about contact tracing and making sure that people stay home if they've been in contact with someone that's infected. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've been on text and the phone quite a bit today with two different groups who are developing digital contact tracing technologies. Uh, and so they're all, there are already a number of apps that have been developed, for instance, in Singapore that work very well. And Singapore is kind of like New Zealand in the sense that it's pretty small, right? it's self-contained yeah, and it, it makes for a good laboratory. So uh, I am optimistic that if there are phased steps put in place with enforcement, that is, in all caps with enforcement mm -hmm. and penalties for those who do not comply. Did you see them beating that, people with sticks in India to stay inside? I did. That yeah, was crazy. Yeah. We could yeah, never do the, that in the United States. Like they were literally yeah, like the, dudes on scooters, like hitting people with rods to stay inside. Like, that. yeah, yeah. As much as I would like to do that, there are criminal <laughs> penalties and uh, Nepal, similar story. There's something to be said yeah. about that though, man. Like that, they get yeah. people to stay in, you know, like, and yeah. it wasn't like they were like beating them more like they're breaking bones. Like it's like just like a, like a bad spanking. Like it's, it's oh, weird, but oh, I mean a really bad spanking. These <laughs> yeah. are like bow staffs, but, uh, the, the, uh, you know, the X factor for me is a non-compliant population in the United States and a, 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 right by design and defiant, by almost. like cultural evolution, a defiant, disobedient population. And uh, we shall see how a politically divided country is able to implement or not implement strict. Uh, basically, I mean, the less strict we are in the next month or two, the longer this is going to last. Sure. Right. And you have a lot of perverse incentives involved with say folks who are hoping for reelection. And if it's a short term reelection, they're willing to make compromises for public health in order to at least appear as though they're attempting to reinvigorate the economy to serve their political interests, which is disgusting, but totally understandable. And really, I think a lot of it has to come, and I don't know if it can legally, at least at this point, from the federal level. There have to be really, really strict uh, penalties for violation of uh, breaking, say, home quarantine or isolation rules. In it's Korea, tough, it, it escalated from like four to $8,000 US and the equivalent in Juan. In, uh, where was it? Someplace, uh, I can't recall, uh, maybe the Philippines. Maybe the Philippines, actually, I can pull it up here. Let me tell you, said that those who violate the lockdown orders could be shot. Uh, that is that's, that's a little hardcore for us, Tim, here in the States. Yeah, Thank Philippines. You. Philippines president says violators of lockdown measures could be shot. I'm not saying <laughs> that's, that's I'm much. not saying. Yeah, China, China, <laughs> Shenzhen also banned cat and dog meat consumption. That's a separate story. The uh, chat says uh, Spain uh, fines up to thirty thousand dollars. I don't yeah, know if that's exactly so. Dollars so or I, not, I, but. I, I do think that without punishments slash Heroes. rewards uh, that a lot of this is wishful thinking. UK we'll is see. 30 pounds. That's what somebody said. 30. Yeah. 30, 30 pounds. pounds. It's like, it's a fucking joke. I mean, come on. So in any case, um, what are you doing on the food front? Up, do you have uh, like a freezer full of shit or what are you doing? 
Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm fully like bison and shit. I'm, you have like crazy meats. Yeah, I have axis deer. I've got venison. I, have, <laughs> I knew it. I, have, I knew that. I have I have hundreds of pounds of of meat and holy crap, everything I could possibly need. So yeah, uh, people I, are saying have, that's Joe Rogan styles. What the people said in the comments. Yeah, Rogan's Rogan's got his elk. Uh, I have my ax, <laughs> I've got my axis deer, and people are asking what type of wine glass this is. It's called Zalto. Z A L T O. Oh, you got the fancy shit. Yeah, I've got like whatever these Costco uh, bumbling idiot uncoordinated person wine glasses are without the stem. That's my that's my yeah. jam. Those are those are easy easy cleaning. You just throw those in the dishwasher. Uh, let's see. Let me let me look at some questions here. Tim, do you live in a high rise or a house? I live in a house. Tim, please chug uh, your wine. Said uh, Ikari one two three. Uh, I'm not going to chug my wine. No, thank you. I'm no longer, I'm no longer 18. Uh, is now an ideal, ideal time to adopt a dog? I would actually like to speak to this for a second. A yeah. lot of people are adopting dogs just as an excuse to be able to get outside. Uh, that's actually something that's been seen in New York City, for instance, where lots of people are adopting dogs who I am not convinced have a long-term intention of keeping said dogs. That fucking bothers me. Having grown up on Long Island where city people no offense to Manhattanites, would come out, adopt a dog for the summer just to keep their kids occupied and then put their dog back in the pound at the end of the summer. And that, in my opinion, is fucked. I think you are morally corrupt if you do such things. So is it the ideal time to adopt a dog? If you're going to keep that dog and you're going to make your life fit around the dog, not the other way around, then I would say consider it. Yeah. Otherwise, you, when you return to don't work, be a selfish prick. Yeah. When, when you return to work, if you're if you're like leaving your dog at home for extended periods of time, that's that's not cool. They need interaction and love and attention, all that good stuff. Yeah. Question for you, Kevin. I, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this. So, yeah. investing question: Betterment slash Wealthfront versus investing straight in Vanguard. Yeah, How I mean, think about that's that? hard. I, I well, I'm an investor in in Wealthfront, so and I put that out in my newsletter today. I mentioned yeah, that. Me too. Me too. You're an investor I as, am well, as well. Yeah. So, you know, I think uh, honestly, though, I have used Betterment. I think it's a great product. I think Wealthfront's great too. I like the risk parity part that uh, Wealthfront offers. Um, and I've used Vanguard as well, just like straight up Vanguard to buy stuff and it's fine. So I would say um, research them all and do whatever you're comfortable with. <laughs> that is the most lawyer response. Well, dude, ever. I don't want to like, it's like self-serving <laughs> to say, go use Wealthfront. I love them. That's why I invested. I think it's a great product. Yeah, I know. But what do you but, like about them? Uh, well, it's the risk parity. They have this, this special thing. What does that mean? That, well, it's, it's a fancy thing that he, like really expensive hedge funds use to get better returns and they offer it um, to their clients, which is normally not something you would get at a, unless you had a lot of money to invest. And I love that they are taking that and dropping that down and making it more accessible to, to most people. So that's, um, yeah. it, it, they do a lot of the, um, uh, harvesting tax loss harvesting, which I think in, so does betterment, yeah. which is great. It's just like these robo advisors are so much smarter than your traditional, like, um, classic advisor you call on the phone. That's going to, you know, make changes for you once a year or twice a year. They, they're optimizing using algorithms for taxes and a whole slew of different things. So forget the fact that we're saying we both invest in a wealth front, like a robo advisor in general is going to be a better performing advisor for you than the most individual uh, advisors that are out there. Couple questions. Mulligan 26 coping advice with single room quarantine for two weeks. Single room. Uh, oh my God. Yeah, I would say exercise, number one. Wine, and for sure, wine. It's on, <laughs> it's on the list. And that, and that then leads to Granbury. Tim, what's your favorite body weight workout routine? Uh, gymnastic body or gymnastic bodies. That's uh, Coach Summer, Christopher Summer, S-O-M-M-E-R. His program is just fantastic. I highly recommend. Yeah, let's talk about working, working out for a sec because I think that's a good one. A lot of people are turning towards that. Um I will say two things. One, I'm not an investor in this company, so I can say this freely. Uh, Fitbod, I've been using lately. Uh, if you have free weights at home or you're just doing body weight workouts, they have a great app. I th I know it's on iOS. I don't know if it's on Android. I think it is. It's called FitBOD. Um, I've been using that for my free weights that I have at, here at the house. 
Uh, Peloton is my main form of cardiovascular exercise, and they also have other classes. And they're actually giving away 90 days of their app as well, which is Disclosure. a whole slew of... Disclosure. <laughs> what? I own, I, well, I own Peloton stock. And so do you. Do you? <laughs> No, I don't. I but I'm looking at it very closely, but I do not yet. Own they have Peloton. they have actually sponsored your podcast, which you didn't mention, which I'm a little mm. offended by. <laughs> That's true. Peloton has sponsored my podcast. I have one upstairs. <laughs> I do love love me my Peloton. I I got you into that. Yeah, you did. You did. You totally did. You and uh, Mark Benioff got me into Peloton. I love how um, the Peloton story about. I, 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 so Tim was like, I'm not going to tell you my Peloton account. Cause I wanted to race you. Right. Cause you can do these. Oh, racing yeah, things. Yeah. Yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. you're like, I'm not giving you my username, blah, blah, blah. And I emailed your assistant and I was like, Hey, what's, uh, I just want to check on Tim's username for his Peloton account. Cause I want to like friend him up or whatever. And she sent me your login <laughs> information with your password. Do you remember that? It was amazing. I do. I was very unhappy about <laughs> I that. Bet. I, okay. I, I told you, I remember I was like, Tim, do not fire her. Do not be upset. She didn't know, but she sent me your entire Peloton login information. The, the fucking like social engineering <laughs> layup, just like casual walk down the court and layup. I love it. Good, good Lord. Uh, let's see. Uh, bear with. I'm looking at some of these. Yeah, we're looking at comments coming questions. in. Questions. Three fiction books you would gift to each other. That's a good question. Oh, geez, Martin fiction. Sange. Uh, three fiction books. Well, I know Kevin can't spell, so I assume his reading level is probably sixth or seventh grade. So based on that, first of all, I would <laughs> I have a learning disability. So if you oh, want to, stop. I do. Don't I do. even pull. I what do. is your learning disability? I, Lazy spelling? No, I'm just not a good speller. I've had issues. <laughs> Sometimes I get the, the, the letters swapped and I love Grammarly. Grammarly is a great product that helps me out there. But I'm just saying, if you want to make fun of people with learning disabilities, I, I get it. Like, <laughs> but that's it. No, I'm real talk though. I always have had a little bit of an issue with that. It's, it's nothing I can memorize. Like it's, it's a, it's a brain thing. Something's something's up there. I think you just type with your knuckles on your iPhone, but we can take this. So exhalation, offline. by the way, exhalation, hundred percent agreed. Yes. yes. Fantastic yeah. series of short fiction books that are amazing. Highly it's recommend. So good. so good. Yeah. Exhalation is outrageously good. Uh, Another one, if you haven't read it, I think everyone should read Dune by Frank Herbert. It's just one of the best world building fiction books of all time. It's one of and I would Daria's, say, my wife's favorites. It's like, oh, yeah. it's so good. If you want, if you want to basically learn, let's just say 90% of the lessons of leadership that you would get from reading a, a hundred of the best books business books, nonfiction on leadership, just read Dune. It's so good. I love that book. So I've, I should uh, get that on. A, I do a lot of audible. Should I, is it good on audible or I'm sure it's good. It'll just take you like six years. It's a long yeah. book. I, I started but Shogun. I, I started Shogun on Audible. It's like you will complete this oh, in Shogun's four and a half great. years. <laughs> like, yeah, Shogun's also <laughs> like, incredible. Super Shogun. long. It's oh, so far so good, man. It's amazing. Yeah, Shogun is is also exceptional. Uh, I would say, what else would you recommend for fiction? I, I mean, I've been getting back into fiction. I think fiction is very medicinal. It has a therapeutic value during times like this. I really do. I'm reading a book called Little Big, Little Comma Big right now, which is a... It's a difficult read. It's, the prose is so beautiful but it requires concentration. And if you can commit to 50 pages of it, you will probably buy in, but it's it's an effort. It's not as easy to read as say Kurt Vonnegut or like Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut, right? It's just an incredible book. It's easy to read. He's hilarious. That's an easy fiction book to read. When do you when do you dive into something like that? What 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 gives you the space mentally? Because like for me, if I'm doing some fiction, it's very casual. I've had a glass of wine. I'm chilling. Daria doesn't have anything else to do. I put in my, you know, AirPods and I just like just zone out a little bit. It's just like fun, but I don't want to like be really thinking serious about something. Like when do you do that? 
you know, recently, just this is just in the last handful of days, I've been reading a little big. Whenever I feel anxious and as though I can't stop in the sense that if I have a to-do list in front of me of things I've somehow convinced myself are of great importance and I can't stop and I need to rush to lunch or whatever it might be, that to me is a signal of scarcity and faulty thinking. So today, for instance, I did this. I took two breaks and just read for 10 or 15 minutes as a way to calm my nerves. Uh, and I've been using it that way. This book, A Little Big, also is one of those books where, for instance, if you if you read The Baron in the Trees by Italo Calvino, which is an incredible book, The Baron in the Trees, there are only a handful of characters. So you can stop reading the book for a week, pick it back up, and you're fine. A Little Big is so complex, and there's so many characters, and there's a really difficult family tree involved that you cannot put this book down for a week hmm. or you'll be totally, totally fucking lost. So you really have to read a little bit every day, yeah. which right now, right now for me, I like, yeah, I like that, that there's that incentive to read I, a little bit. Gen, like I typically hate those types of books, like game of Thrones. You're like, okay, they're introducing like the 42nd character and you're like, okay, who are you? Yeah. Doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah. Dave, I can't even say this day. Dave Inksensee, something like that, recommended Zorba the Greek. I think Zorba the Greek is a fantastic book. That is actually a great book to read right now because it really contrasts this type A control freak with this freewheeling Epicurean Zorba. That is a great, great, great book. I would su I would suggest. Somebody just said that TJ Rivera. Dune is excellent on Audible, which I would fucking oh, hope sweet. because awesome. it's such a cla such a classic. Fear is the mind killer. Yes, the Bene Gesserit litany against fear. I've got a I've got a question for you, Tim. That now that we're a couple of glasses deep, or I think, <laughs> are you have you drank two glasses or no? You're yeah, I'd say so. I think you're I'd say so. I'm, that a I'm, bit. I'm, I'm, I'm about yeah three quarters of a bottle gone, so I'd say yes. All right, so. I'm curious, like you mentioned a minute ago about, you know, when you need a break to go and, and read this book, right? Like, you, like the stress kind of thing. What is, what's bothering you? Cause I think most people like watching this would think you've got it all very successful, yeah. plenty of money, yeah. like get held up, yeah, totally. plenty, plenty of bison. Like what is it? <laughs> you know, but like, really, what is it that's like, what's, what's getting under your skin? Like what, what's bothering you these days? Uh, yeah, well, that presupposes that I know what it is that's bothering me. Interesting. Right? So uh, I would say plenty of ayahuasca oh, journeys to uh, even things out oh, a little oh. bit. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. I mean, we we could talk about that <laughs> separately. We we could talk about that if you like, but ayahuasca is a big gun. I don't I don't rec recommend that for everyone. Uh, by uh, actually recommend it for a very very small percentage of people. But the the This period of time and this amount of uncertainty and the heightened fear that many people are feeling, I think, brings to the forefront whatever it is that you haven't dealt with, mm. whatever it is you haven't processed. And I spent much of my life numbing myself and turning off sensitivities. And the last few years have, have entailed me turning back on many sensitivities. Hmm. And I, I think fundamentally I'm a very sensitive person. And that doesn't mean that I'm easily offended. I mean, sensitive, like an instrument, like a jewelry scale versus a body weight scale. And, uh, the, it's interesting. You mentioned that I've noticed that about you, dude, to be honest, like I've known you for a while now, quite a while. You've known me for a that more than a decade. Yeah. yeah. And I would say that when I first met you, you were very um, hardened, you know, and you've yeah. softened a lot and you yeah. become in a, in a more fragile in a, And I mean that in a way of like, uh, it's actually a stronger position to be in. 
Um, yeah. someone that can actually talk about what's going on. And that wasn't the case 10 years ago. <sighs> Definitely was not the case 10 years ago. Yeah. I appreciate you saying that, man. I'm more, it's a beautiful uh, thing is I, I feel like I've kind of gone through a similar transformation. So it, it's, a you, you thing. definitely have, you definitely have, I've, uh, I've become more porous and permeable in so much as I've taken a lot of armor off and armor is helpful in some ways in the sense that it keeps things out. It also keeps a lot trapped within when you take the armor off, then you're exposed to more. And uh, so perhaps 10 years ago, the weight of the world and all these deaths and all the unemployment wouldn't have affected me very much, but it's affected me a lot in the last few weeks. And uh, so I think there's a, a mourning period that I'm going through that has been very emotionally difficult. I'm not worried about me personally, right? Like financially, who the fuck cares? I mean, I, and I, and I say that in such a way, very deliberately, because if I were to try to spin some type of woe is me story, it would be so fucking absurd that I right. would want you, Kevin, to like slap me through the fucking internet because you and I are both very, very fortunate. And we've also worked very hard and made some good decisions, but we've also had a lot of luck, a ton of luck, and a ton of luck. And, uh, so, so I am in, I am in a good position. I'm in a good position to help my family, but the, the stuff that is being brought up is largely things I can't identify. These are things from mm. my past, things from my childhood, probably that are causing a level of anxiety in the face of uncertainty that mm. has no basis in my current security. Does that make sense? Like yeah. I, I'm not worried about my mortgage payment. I'm not worried about my food, but nonetheless, I have this high level of anxiety at times. The last few days have been quite good. I've, I've actually felt pretty good the last few days, but there are these moments when I'll go to bed. I'm exhausted at the end of every day. These days I'm completely spent. And I'll go to bed and I'll lay in bed and all of a sudden I'm tired and wired and my mind is mm. just producing a million thoughts a second that are all kind of anxiety driven and I don't have an explanation for it. I just don't have a clean- And that, that itself anxiety. has to drive more anxiety, right? Because you're like, why can't yeah. I figure out what it is that's bothering me, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. So I- uh, The thing- you know, I, I, Yeah, no, please- I was just going to say that the, since you're sharing all this, like the thing that, that worries me the most is one, uh, I think it's hard because I see my sister, um, not having the work that she used to. And so that's challenging. Um, and, and I see her struggles with her. She's a single mom and she, um, is r trying to raise some, uh, teenager now at home and it's challenging, you know, working like being a teacher at home now and my mom who is 80 now. So those, those things are both weighing on me, but I would say, honestly, like the thing that scares me most is not, not me getting this or not me getting sick from it. Cause you know, random people our age do die from this. Right. It's like, it's kind yeah. of weird like that. Like, you know, it's like, you think you're fine. And then, you know, you're 40, I'm 42 and I get hit or 43 and I get hit and I'm just like dead. Right. Like it is happening. So yeah. I'm not scared of dying at all, actually. I'm scared of not seeing and being able to talk to my girls when they're going to need it most, like through their formative years. And I think that is the thing that at my core, I just like, I love my girls so much, I wouldn't want to to miss out on that. And so that, yeah. it's not the death part, it's the it's it's that part. So it's it's hard. It's like we all have these these things that are kind of like hanging over our heads, you know, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. What if you found helpful? Oh gosh. Uh, well, half bottle of wine definitely helps. Um, <laughs> uh, I would say, no, I would say helpful is, yeah, might, is might, might have to make this a weekly thing. You know, this honestly, could be our, this could be our weekly therapy. Honestly, helpful first and foremost, without a doubt, is, and this is Mr. Rogers definitely said it best. I mentioned this in my newsletter, like 
anything that is human is mentionable and anything that is mentionable is manageable. And that is so true. Like if you can just talk about it with your spouse, Mm. with your friend, with anyone that you can try and create a social connection with and just be like, this is what I'm going through. Just getting that off your chest is just like brings you down. It doesn't get you back to where you want to be like perfect and happy and health, like so stoked and, you know, but it does bring you down a couple notches and we just have to remember to do that every few days. Just like, where, like, did, you, where did you get that quote? Was that Mr. From Rogers? Doc? No, I, I know it's fucking Mr. Rogers, but was it from the documentary about him or was it from it the was, Tom Hanks version? It was, was it, it from was something from the, else? It was from the Tom Hanks version, which I loved. And, and I went and did, then did a research to actually make sure it was from him and not just like Hollywood. And it, it did come from him. So, um, the Tom Hanks movie was phenomenal. It's available for rent. Now you can get on Amazon, you can get on iTunes. It is, it's a great, uh, it, it's a great movie. It's, 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 yeah. it, it's not Tiger King or <laughs> the Tiger King is pretty great. Hey, we should talk about this. Let's move into, well, what, hold, what hold on before we get, before we get Tiger King. So somebody suggested, or they just mentioned how to stop worrying and start living. That's a Dale Carnegie book that is fucking fantastic. I could not recommend it more. It has very literal title as do many Dale Carnegie books, but how to, how to stop worrying and start living is, is actually an exceptional, exceptional book. So I would suggest. That's awesome. We got to create a, well, we're saving the video for this. So I guess we can do some show notes and stuff for all the stuff we talked about and, and post it online. Yeah. So you were about to bring up what, what we're watching. Yeah. What are we watching lately? Like what are people uh, watching these days? In terms uh, of like favorite, I, Tiger King is like my favorite thing right now. I'm on episode three. Yep. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get into that real quick. A Bucci says the People fear are saying, of death oh, or ego conscious may be underlying the anxiety. That's not accurate. I don't actually fear death, which may be from uh, taking too many psychedelic compounds, but that's not it. It's something else. Uh, so TBD, but, uh, Let's see here. People are saying Ozark, by the way. Is that how you say it? Ozark? Like I, I have heard multiple people. It's on episode th- or uh, season three now. If that's right, people will correct me in the chat. Is it awesome? People are saying Ozark is awesome. Ozark is incredible. Ozark. Tiger King was good. I found the animal treatment depressing, so I stopped after two episodes. I make, I may continue, but that hasn't been my go-to. What, what oh, have been your but but you told me tell me about to. yeah but 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 maybe I haven't passed like the point of no return with Tiger King it is it is so strange as to be compelling yeah I get that yeah uh, Daria won't watch it with me I'm watching it solo I sit in bed with my iPad and I watch it she will she will not watch she it with you why not uh, she missed the first episode and then she's just like I don't want to watch something dumb and I'm like eh, it's dumb but it's kind of good you know. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, you know, Daria, the, the, the three person marriage with that one young guy looking like he was fucking. That was out the best. Mind was amazing. It was so good. And then yeah. she definitely fed her husband to the tigers. It's I mean, that seems to be at least the way that the it's going. producers yeah. wanted to show. Yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty crazy. Oh, People man. are saying Formula it's, One. What is Formula One? Formula One. I mean, I is understand what it is in terms of like Peter is Atia's it a, favorite thing ever. Yeah, racing, race cars. But is it a documentary that people are talking about, or like? Oh, I don't know. I, I assume that it's some kind of like Sky. Yes, F one on Netflix. You, I don't get it, guys. I'm sorry. Like, I I can appreciate how difficult it is. I can appreciate how the Mercedes team spends like 500 million a year. Yeah, but I can he, appreciate all of that, but like I don't actually know how to discern the skill from watching these cars go around. But the here's circles. here's the interesting thing: people are saying that this is so amazing. Uh, like everyone's saying, Formula One, F one, F one. Like if it's a documentary, like why not watch an episode of it? That sounds like even, watch I'm Senna. not into it either. Watch the documentary Senna S E N N A. It's fucking fantastic. It's so good. Is it highly recommended? I don't know. People aren't saying that. They're saying Formula One in the chat. Oh, they don't know. What they, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> if they actually follow F1, then they would agree with Senna. Peter Atia, so his favorite driver of all time is Ayrton Senna. Yeah. 
And uh, the documentary is just fantastic. I highly, highly recommend. What else are you watching besides Tiger King? I don't watch it. I don't, we don't watch TV. We don't watch. Uh, oh, I, stop No, it. I'm being dead serious. We don't, <laughs> I, I'm I, like, if people really want to know the real me, I will tell you the truth. I, we don't watch any TV. We watch, I love NBA. I will watch basketball. Um, if my team is doing well, which is the Green Bay Packers, I will watch some football, even though I'm kind of conflicted there because of the head injury stuff. And I would say that uh, I watch movies. Like if there's like, I watched the new Star Wars. I thought it was great. I don't know why people hated on it. I, I didn't watch it in the theater. I just watched it when it came out, you know, I rented it and thought it was amazing. But I'm not, we're not huge TV people. TV. You watching the chat? <laughs> TV. Yes, I'm watching this chat. TV. What the fuck are you talking about? TV. It's not like you have coaxial cables coming out into some. No, I have YouTube TV. I use that as my main TV. I don't have any more. Uh, so you watch basketball and movies. That's very ungratifying. What movies do you watch? Dude, basketball what is it, what, amazing, by the way. It's like the, one of the best sports out there. And movies, I would say I watched Contagion recently, which is, have you not seen Contagion? Uplifting. Yeah, right. Have you seen it? I have seen contagion. Yes. Yeah. It's really scary. It's, it's like, <laughs> no, but it's like really crazy how it's like, so like, a, it's kind of like what's happening right now. It's, it's, it's kind of nuts. Um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, if there's an a, occasional movie that comes out that is awesome, I'll, I'll put it on. Okay. I'm watching the amazing Mrs. Maisel. On yes. Weekdays. You were saying a ama- you were trying to get me to watch that like a couple weeks ago. I think it's hilarious. It's great. And uh, that is our weekday, meaning my girlfriend and I watch this on weekdays. We differentiate between weekdays and weekends. You guys are so crazy. You have so many rules. It's super helpful to tell them about how you can't talk about COVID for more than a certain number of hours. Well, no, I mean, I think this is a good, uh, good rule, actually. So (laughs) uh, it's been difficult to enforce. Uh, but I try and it's been encouraged to very strongly to not talk about COVID after dinner hours. <laughs> and we have dinner together almost every night and we light a candle. It's very romantic. We open the sliding doors so we can hear some of the, the sounds from nature. Usually this is around say six thirty seven o'clock tonight is an exception. Cause I'm getting shit faced with Kevin on the internet with our however many thousand closest friends. And uh, uh, so that, that that's one guideline that we haven't been following very closely, but actually it's been better in the last few weeks. Cause I was so early on this that I feel like I've distributed my anxiety to reasonably her, yeah. e- evenly over a long period of time. Whereas you were so on the not, phone with uh, me and you're like, I can't talk about COVID. Like I, I passed the hour. <laughs> I passed the, I passed the time when I'm supposed to be talking about it. I was like, what are you talking about, dude? You're like, yeah, I, I, I think it's, rules. I think I it's rules. very, I think it's, I think it's very reasonable <laughs> of my girlfriend to not want me to talk about fucking COVID past a certain hour. <laughs> but, but we, uh, we often exercise in the morning. That's one ritual. We also then have dinner tonight or not tonight, but almost every night together uh someone asked about best meal made during quarantine uh we really like butternut not butternut i always say that (laughs) spaghetti squash which can be cleaned it can be disinfected very easily because the rind is thick plus uh ground axis deer plus tomato sauce garlic oregano and a few other things it's fucking amazing sounds great is oh it's so good it's just unbelievably good so that that's one uh then the differentiation between weekdays and weekends i think is actually quite important because when every day can be groundhog day it is psychologically a reprieve when you can delineate or provide break points and sort of open chapter close chapter on a weekly basis so for us that means that On the weekends, we watch movies or uh, we watch something that is not our primary weekday series, which currently is The Amazing Mrs. Maisel. So last weekend, for instance, we binge watched some of season two of Westworld. 
and there are a number of documentaries that we may end up watching, but we'll reserve the amazing Mrs. Maisel for weekdays. And uh, it's been it's been helpful. It's been it's it's just helpful in a world of uncertainty to have rules and certainty related to certain things. And I'm sure that uh, some folks will find that ridiculous. I'm sure some no, will think, find it very helpful. I think but you said it. We, we, we find it helpful. I think what you said around it being Groundhog Day rings true for a lot of people and that because we are all quarantined, it is like kind of the same thing, you know, over and over again. And one of the things that Daria, my wife, like said was like, I want to like last night was our seven year wedding anniversary. And she's Congrats, like, man, thank you. And she was like, I want to dress up. Like I want to like, I know we're sitting across from each other at home, but I want to put on something really nice. And I'm like, okay, same here. Like I'm going to put down on like a nice button down shirt and like do it proper because like, you know, it's, it, you kind of have to like say, let's not just fall into the same thing every single time. And I, I think a schedule could help with, with things like that, you know, like to change it up a bit. Yeah. So what do you guys do? You got, you took off your underoos, your onesie, and you got dressed up. What do yeah. you guys do for your anniversary? Which is fucking crazy, by the way. Seven I mean, years. it shows you how long we've known each other. Yeah. I Because that doesn't seem that long ago. And I remember being at the wedding. Seven years. That's I fucking know. nuts. I know. That's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's It's been an amazing adventure. And uh, I've learned a lot. But I would say that, uh, yeah, I mean, we just basically had dinner. Um, just kind of hung out at the house. I mean, there's not like a whole lot to do. You know, it's like, yeah. what are you going to do other than just like having a, we had like a nice little meal and some dessert, which we don't, don't normally do. And a little too much <laughs> Dude, wine. Don't, don't even start with the no dessert. I've seen you when I stayed at your place with uh, my girlfriend not too long ago. I remember <laughs> we came back from dinner. You were, you were polishing guest. off. Po you were polishing off pints of ice cream. Listen, you hit that ice cream too. We shared a pint and you killed most of it. And that was good ice cream. It was good. I'm not going to, I'm not going to accept the, I killed most of it. I did take the like beggars. Well, we ate some leftovers. edibles. That's true. We did. We also, and, we, and then we hit the ice cream hard, which facilitates the ice cream. That was amazing. Ice cream, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. They make good ice cream <laughs> here in Portland, Oregon. Truth, people are saying truth comes out in the comments. <laughs> it's legal, people. It's legal. It's legal. It's legal. Um, uh, <laughs> salt and straw. What, straws, the salt straw. what is what is salt and straw? Is that the ice it's, cream company? It, yeah, it is not the one that we had, uh, but it is it is one of the best in Portland for sure. Has Tim's yeah, position Ruby on Jewel's weed the one changed? We had. Noah Johnson. I don't know what my position on weed was. So it's hard for me to say. I mean, you were anti weed. Changed. I'm not anti weed. I'm just, I just, I'm just think kidding. A lot of weed makes me fucking paranoid. So I don't enjoy taking it. Uh, all right. The whoop band. No. I've had issues with the whoop band, man. I had a whoop what the band. Hell is, what the hell is that? It's like a Fitbit, fancy Fitbit. And I, I, uh, I want to oh, love it. Oh, it, I do accurate. remember this. Yeah, I do remember that. What the whoop or the weed? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, the whoop. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, no weed right now. I actually do use weed will calm you, dude. Thanks, Sifazar. Uh, I do use uh, full spectrum CBD oil for sleep. Where do you get that it. from? I don't remember the brand. Because I like the honestly. pure encapsulations uh, full spectrum CBD, which is quite nice. That might be what I have, actually. Yeah. Yeah, they make a good one. It's like 10 or 20 milligrams per, per thing. It's good for Tim. Good for do you sleep. still ride your boosted board? Absolutely not. Cause I, I view it as suicidal for me at the moment. It's just too fast. <laughs> like the, the, the speed limiter on it is exceptionally high. So I, I have very little confidence in my ability to do a stop, drop and roll. If I wipe out at 20 miles an hour, uh, how did I lose 15 pounds? Yeah. Cli client giant C O M 
asks uh, by forgetting to eat because I'm too fucking stressed out. I don't recommend that as a diet approach necessarily. Uh, more sleep recommendations, having troubles, groundhog day. This is from mm. N Medler. What recommendations might you have? Yeah. So sleep is definitely something I've spent a lot of time, um, playing around with. Yeah. I think Max has a great point here. Max Goldberg, uh, Matt Walker's book, why we sleep yep. is a phenomenal resource for this stuff. Um, that said, I've done low dose melatonin, um, and also the, um, magnesium is, is, uh, the one that you recommended to him at the beginning of the show. Magteen. Yeah. That's uh, T E I N. Daria, magnesium Daria, my wife, she, she takes that every night. She takes the one that's yeah. from a brand called live on, which is, is a liposomal form. And, uh, yeah. and she swears by it. Like she, she loves that. All, all the roid monsters love live on. Do they really? Why? Oh Yeah for liver recovery after taking their alpha alkylated oral anabolics. So what do they take That's for a, liver recover? What, what, uh, I can't remember the actual they do a vitamin, the product. They do a vitamin yeah, C, it, they do a magnesium. Yeah, they, they have a liver product that was oh, what really? kind of put them on the map. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, I also use their liposomal vitamin C. I do too. That's my favorite vitamin it's, C. Tastes like horse semen, but you know, I've never had horse semen, but I would imagine that uh, it, it probably similar. Is similar, probably you, similar. You have. Yeah, you have. No, yeah. you have had have horse I? semen. At if your you, house? If, you, if you've had live on vitamin C. Because I know I've tried some crazy stuff at your house and four hour chef had some. I think there was a recipe within there with horse semen that. Was, <laughs> you know, of wrong. all my books, I think the most appropriate right now for quarantine is the four hour chef. It is. Uh, I'm drunk enough to say this. It is the perfect <laughs> book for quarantine. It really is. Is it an audible? No, because it would make no fucking sense. I know. Sense. That would be amazing, yeah. though. Like, just yeah. hearing you being like, one it would tablespoon be baking soda, <laughs> one <laughs> tablespoon cinnamon. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> oh, man. All right. What else do we have in the comments? Uh, Let me take a look at our list of things that we wanted to cover because I, I have to... Yeah, yeah. Dive in. I'll look at the comments. You look at our list. Uh, apps we've been using. I think we've kind of covered that. Shows we've been talking about. Uh, I think we covered everything we wanted to talk about. Is there anything else that people want us to talk about? Um, sure there'll be no shortage here. Maka for men. Any new drawings, Tim? Wim Hof. Oh, Kyle bounce. Will you guys do this again? I don't know. What do you think, Kevin? I don't know. It's been fun. I would love to, yeah. uh, to continue. This is a good to, time. Yeah. Especially if this, this kind of craziness continues, which I imagine it would like, it'd be fun to do this every, every few weeks, you know, make yeah. it monthly. Yeah. I yeah, think monthly would sure. be fun. That's, that's, that's a good idea. Cool. Um, any, should we do any parting notes or any, like any things that we want to say on the way out? How was the stream quality? I'm curious for people. Was it good? Great, great, good. Awesome. I'm glad this worked out because yeah, here's he, the funny thing. I went on to uh, zoom and Tim is like, how are we going to do this? Like, let's figure it out. And I, I went into zoom and they had a, um, what they call, what did they call it? The, uh, what is the account called? Where like you, Oh, the uh, webinar account. I was like, oh, we'll do a webinar with Zoom. It supports up to 10,000 people. And remember I sent you the price? It's 10 grand. <laughs> it's 10 grand for a Zoom webinar for 10,000 people. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And so That's I, a lot of money. Yeah, so thankfully, uh, obviously, we know Bennett, Bennett Caffeine, the CEO, and he he um, offered to do this. Ben, and ben, Ben's great, even though he almost killed me. Scared. Yeah, he almost that's, killed you. That, that's a side note. Yeah. Side note. All right. If you've ever... If you want to look up tomahawk skiing accident, that'll give you a, a nice image of what it looked like as I catapulted myself headfirst down many steep inclines with our dear friend Ben. Yeah, he's a big snowboarder. He, he's he was very skiing, good, at, though, right? Was he was snowboarding? He's, no, he's much better at snowboarding than I yeah. am at skiing which led to the disparity in competence when we went down cornices and uh, I ended up tomahawking head over heel 
over and over again. Tim sounds like he has peanut butter stuck to the roof of his mouth. Eric Kaplan, that's because I've had a glass of wine. More than a glass of wine. Uh, let's do some parting, some I've parting had, thoughts. What are your parting bo- thoughts? Bo- Give me- bottle, bottle of wine. You know when they do Kevin, like the. I, uh, I, I feel like you have an urgency to your escape from oh, no, this I, live broadcast. I, just, I know that we have. Um, we Tom's have drunk at some point. Tom's drunk. <laughs> That was amazing. <laughs> Whoever said Tom's drunk, it's got 13, four, 16 hearts now, 24, 27, 40. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> that person's hammed. Slayer soundtrack during isolation, Tim. Blood red. Blood oh, red. Great soundtrack workout track, too. Slayer. So good. Raining blood. Yes. Raining blood's pretty intense. Yeah. That whole album is very intense. But I, I have a, blood a Spotify red is good, good. workout that includes old Metallica and Slayer. It's it's good stuff. Oh, man. On fucking white wine. Who gets drunk on white wine? Jeffrey. That's a good point. E. Heath. Tim Ferriss. That's who. Because you know why? Because I can. That's why. Random drunk show. All right. So let's do some parting thoughts here before we go. All right. Um, All right do you want to start? It. No. Fuck no. All right. I'll start. Um, <laughs> I know it's tough. <laughs> Give us a Gettysburg address. I want to hear something profound, Kevin. No, there's a, there's nothing profound other than um, one. I want to thank everybody for showing up tonight. It's nice to have a little break from the chaos, obviously. And Tim, thank you for agreeing to do this because it's um, it's just uh, it's tough times. And and I think that you know we've seen this uh, this this type of thing impact everyone that we know. And it doesn't matter how rich you are, like or how poor you are, like it's, it's hitting everyone in a different way. And, um, I just want to know, I just want to tell everyone out there that my, my thoughts are with all of you. I know it's, um, this is going to be a challenging few years. So we will get through it together and hopefully with a little bit of comedy and some random shows every now and then, and our podcasts that we do. And, you know, um, I just, uh, want to encourage everyone to, to, to be safe and to quarantine as much as possible. Stay home. Like, uh, I'm doing grocery want runs once a week now. Um, I, I have a little bit of stockpiled food, but I also go out to the grocery store and, you know, uh, there's no shame in, in wearing gloves or wearing a mask or it's, it's like, it's, it's real. So, um, I just want to give much love to all the people watching this. You're Thank up. you, Mr. Rose. I would say to add to that, that um, things are heavy. Things are heavy right now. And we will get through this, even if, if this is, as Bill Gates would perhaps propose, the once-in-a-century pandemic the, the human species, you know, the, the, the hominids that we are have existed for a very long time and we have made it through many pandemics, many epidemics over time and we will make it through this one. And it is your job in a way now that natural selection and Darwinism are in full force once again to not kill yourself and not kill other people. And I I would suggest that you, as Kevin said, stay home as much as possible. Wear masks. The masks do help, despite what what the World Health Organization might lead you to believe. That's going to change in a few days, dude. It's it's Yeah, it's fucking nonsense. The masks help, period. End of story. Especially if you're asymptomatic. Sorry to interrupt, but like if you, if you don't if yeah. pe- most people don't know they have it and that's a like you're Yeah. Yeah. And so one way to think about this is not just how do you protect yourself, but how would you act if you had COVID-19, if you were positive, how would you act so you would not contaminate anyone else? And uh, there are a lot of ways to work around that. If you need to do grocery runs, you could consider using a task rabbit, for instance, who's already going to be exposing themselves. How can you piggyback on other activities, et cetera, and so on. But uh, I would say 
it's very helpful at times like this when we're so mired in the weeds and so overwhelmed and so perhaps uh, stressed in the face of uncertainty to zoom out. And if you zoom out, you could look at a book like, I believe it is The Lessons of History by William and Ariel Durant. And when you read a book like that, which effectively takes 10,000 pages of documentation Jesus, that is already that. ready a synopsis and then concentrates it down to about 120 pages. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Then you realize how common what we're going through is when placed in the context of a broader human history. And for that reason, you know, there is reason to be careful. There is reason to be cautious and strategic, but humans will exist after this. I suspect it will be sooner than people expect in terms of economic recovery. And as it stands right now, I think the most important thing is to take this seriously now so that it doesn't extend over 18 to 24 months. The more seriously you take it now, the less seriously you can take it 12 months from now. And that, that I think is worth highlighting. So that's what I'd say. I also extend my heart and empathy to all those who are suffering right now with job loss, with economic uncertainty, and so on. It's a fucking hard time. And uh, hopefully, every, everyone can do a little bit to help the handful of people all around them. Uh, you don't need to save the world, but if there's a barber or a dog walker or a coffee shop or someone near you who you can reach out to just to simply ask, what can I do to help? Is there anything I can do to help? That's a major public service. And karmically, you will be adding a lot to your bank account for the final tally. So that's, and sometimes that's what help, I would say. Sometimes help is just having a conversation with someone, just getting them to a chance to vent and get things off their chest, you know? Um, 100%. The one thing I will say that when you were talking to him that you were coming up in the comments is that people were saying masks are not available. And I will say that I did see uh, a very interesting, it wasn't an article, I actually heard it on um, on the radio uh, when I was driving in, in the car. Um, it was talking about alternatives to the masks that people are using. And they have found that sewing fabric, like multi-layered fabric, like like cotton masks and even scarves and other things, anything you can do to cover your mouth and nose um, is effective. Is it going to be clinical grade? Like maybe not, but you know, there's no shame in going to the grocery store with a, a scarf over your mouth. Like there's the, there's, these are difficult times and we got to just make do with what we have. So I, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. It's like, it's, it's, it's tough, but we, until those, uh, become available to the general public. It's like, we got to do the best we can. Yeah. Something is better than nothing. hundred percent at this point. So number one, you know, I would say do what you can be responsible. Think about not just your safety, but the safety of those in your community. And also try to be easy on yourself, right? Nobody's fucking ace in this right now. Nobody is. We're all fucking scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody you know, is using this. It's like I got an 80 year old mom that I'm freaking out about every single day because she goes out and checks the mail by herself and touches her mail. And I'm like, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. Like there's things like, you know, little tiny holes in all of this stuff. And like my mom's got really, really, really bad asthma. And so it's like a done done deal. She gets this and it's game over. And it's like, yeah, it just you know, we all are, are struggling here, um, in some capacity and I know some more so than others. So, uh, if you have this or, you know, someone that has it, we're rooting for you. We love you. Um, all we can do is give love and support to those around us. Yeah. Here, here, man. That's all, all right. I have to say. Cheers, brother. 
so good. Right. I'm out of wine. Cheers, I, can, I can pour a tiny bit more. I'm, Are you completely I'm out? out of boost? Did you finish I'm your wa- bottle? My bottle's empty. Holy shit! You did that all yourself? I did. I'm proud yes. of you, Tim. Tim. Tom. Oh, T- Tim. Tom. Thanks, Kev. Kev. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> the people are saying Tom is lit right now. Oh, Tom is lit. No che- doubt. Cheers, everybody. We we love you Cheers, all. Everybody. Seriously, uh, stay safe out there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this gave you some laughs and and some good times. And uh we'll talk soon. <laughs>